God's Word speaks of a spirit or a way of life that would be the spirit of the last days. The Lord Jesus said in Luke 17, 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. In this study, Scott Pauley will lead us to rediscover Noah's faith in God. Though Noah lived in days of wickedness, lawlessness, violence, and immorality, his faith in God was strong. Noah courageously led his family during this time, and he was God's witness to that generation. Could it be, just like Noah of old, you and I are living in the last generation before God's judgment? Join us now for this study, as it was in the days of Noah. I must be getting old, but I enjoy watching birds. <laughs> I remember years ago reading that Vance Havner, one of my favorite evangelists to read after, was a bird watcher, and he would walk through the woods and had so studied them he could he could tell just by their their voice, by their song, what kind of bird it was, and uh, he was he was just taken with them. Well, the older I get, the more I enjoy watching them. Uh, we we love to watch the birds at the bird feeder near our home, and the cardinals are my personal favorite. Uh, God, who created the birds, used them often in Scripture as symbols of spiritual truth. Uh, for example, the eagle uh, is used to picture God's work in us and God's work for us in Scripture. Uh, quail, used as a picture of God's provision. Uh, the swallow, a picture of God's presence and uh, safety in his presence. Uh, in the Psalms, you have the pelican and the owl, a picture of loneliness. Uh, the Lord Jesus, in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 10, talked about God's care for the sparrow, the smallest, uh, the, the most uh, defenseless, and yet God cares. Uh, the raven, a picture of searching and uh, even of restlessness, and we'll see that in our text in just a moment. But today, I want to bring you to the dove, found at least 31 times in Scripture and forever a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're in the life of Noah. You'll remember that Noah was well up in years when God brought him into the ark, and the Bible says the Lord shut him in. Aren't you glad that the Lord seals us, the Lord protects us and keeps us? But then imagine staying on that boat for days on end while the rain, the torrential rain fell and the floodwaters rose and everything and everyone was destroyed uh, you're, you're on the boat just waiting to see what God will do. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, verse number 6, it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Remember I said to you the raven is a picture of restlessness, of searching. Uh, even the oldest book in the Bible, Job chapter 1, verse number 7, uh, talks about that. And then you come to verse number 8. Uh, of Genesis chapter 8, also he sent forth a dove. Here's the first mention of the dove in Scripture. He sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground, but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Uh, this is interesting, but the ancient mariners would actually use doves as uh, a GPS of sorts uh, to give direction, to find dry land. That's exactly what Noah was doing. Verse 10 says, And he stayed yet other seven days. I wonder what he did for those seven days. I imagine he was worshiping and he was praying and he was waiting on God. Interesting, isn't it, that God did not give him every detail. Noah didn't steer the boat. He rested in the Lord. He waited. Uh, he didn't force the door open. He waited on God's perfect time. He stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so Noah knew that the waters were baited from off the earth, and he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth a dove, which returned not again unto him any more. So the dove, of course, the, the bearer of good news, of glad tidings, that there is earth, there's vegeta vegetation, there is life, uh, is here first introduced to us. And of course, as we go through the rest of Scripture, this progressive revelation, we see that the dove is very often pictured as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. 
So you see God's presence with Noah, just as the Spirit of God is with us. What do we learn from this this dove? Well, first, there's a picture of purity here. The Lord Jesus talked about being harmless as doves. Uh, Interesting that the dove was one of the only birds considered clean, and it could be offered uh, as an Old Testament sacrifice, the exact opposite of the raven that was always feeding on death and uh, a roamer and a scavenger. I know the dove is a picture of purity. It's also a picture of provision because uh, we see this dove bringing back the olive branch, a picture of reconciliation even to this day in our world. Uh, The raven brought nothing. He consumed, but the dove bringing this picture of reconciliation. Now, the dove is not only a picture of purity and provision, but also a picture of peace. The dove is a gentle bird. Think of the sweet Holy Spirit, the love of God, and the tenderness of God, and the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. One of his titles is, He is the Comforter that comes to us. Now, the dove is used throughout the Song of Solomon in tender terms. There's a certain intimacy connected with this symbolism. The lasting emblem of peace Oh, dear ones, our God is the God of purity and provision and peace. But the dove is also a picture of purpose because he sent out three times. Uh, some people see in this the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, some people see in this history. I've seen and read where some people say the, the first is a picture of the Old Testament, no rest, and the second a picture of the time of Christ, reconciliation, and the third uh, he returned no more the age of the Spirit. I, I think they're reading into that. Let me tell you what I see in this. I see a great practicality. Do you know what the practicality is? One step at a time, God was leading Noah. One step at a time, one day at a time, one moment at a time. And why does the Holy Spirit of God come to dwell within us? To lead us one day at a time. To lead us one step at a time. I want to say that the same God who was the God of purity and provision and peace and purpose for Noah, is the same God who in the person of the Holy Spirit has brought that purity and provision and peace and purpose into our lives. Blessed be the name of our great God. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the moon. And uh, you remember those famous words, Houston, Tranquility Base, the Eagle has landed. Well, may I tell you that when the Holy Spirit of God comes, it's not the eagle landing, it is the dove landing. The dove has landed. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, the dove landed on Jesus in the baptismal waters of the Jordan River, the the pure one, the peaceable one, uh, the dove, the sweet Holy Ghost resting on the Lord Jesus. Uh, In Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came to indwell every believer. On that day, the dove landed on the church, bringing all of the power and purpose of God uh, into fulfillment. And friend, when you take the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you come into the ark of safety and come to know the grace of God personally, the dove of the Holy Spirit lands on you. And Do you know why? Because he wants to provide all that is needed in your life, and he wants to lead you day by day and step by step. You know, if you study all of the references to the dove in Scripture, two things are always emphasized, their eyes and their voice. Oh, I love that. May I tell you, the Holy Spirit sees perfectly. He sees what you cannot see. Let him guide. And the Holy Spirit speaks. Listen to the gentle voice and promptings of the Spirit of God in your life today and follow him. The Spirit of God in these wicked times is still at work. The Spirit of God, even in the midst of all the judgment we're living through, is still at work. The Spirit of God is at work in this world among the people of God. Would you recognize the Holy Spirit today? Instead of just talking about how bad it is, how bad it was in the days of Noah, let's rejoice that we have the good Spirit of God uh, to dwell with us, to abide with us forever, and to lead us step by step. Picture in your mind today the the beautiful, gentle dove of the Spirit of God resting upon your life, and I promise you it will bring peace in the midst of difficult days. Thank you for joining us today for this study, and may each of us obey Christ's command to occupy till I come. We invite you to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and sign up for Scott's weekly email newsletter called Helping Your Joy. And we believe this resource will do just that. 
In it, you can read brief devotional thoughts, learn about great Christians in history, and even see Scott's upcoming itinerary. Get the Helping Your Joy newsletter straight to your inbox every Thursday when you subscribe at enjoyingthejourney.org. We look forward to studying the Bible with you next time on Enjoying the Journey.